Hey there, I wanna talk about what I think might be close to the perfect lens for the Canon R7 for shooting video. And I know there's no such thing as a perfect lens or no such thing as a perfect camera, but I think for a lot of situations and for a lot of people for shooting video on the R7, this combo might be the best. Now I wanna do this video a little bit backwards than usual. Usually I'll talk about the gear and then I'll show you samples, but let's do the samples and then we'll talk about the gear. Well, it's probably no surprise that I've chosen the Sigma 18 to 35 as my favorite lens to recommend for video on the Canon R7. It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's widely used and well-loved. And you can talk to anyone that's ever used this lens. They will talk about and rave about the image quality and the build quality of this lens. Now it is an older lens, came out in 2013. So there are a couple negatives, which I will talk about later on in this video. But why is this lens so perfect for the R7 for shooting video? First of all, the focal range. 18 to 35 is very versatile. Of course, the R7 has a 1.6 times crop, which gives you roughly like a 29 to 56 millimeter full frame equivalence. I wish it was a little bit wider, but that's what we got. Now, the biggest feature on top of the image quality and build quality of this lens and how sharp it is, is the maximum aperture. It has a maximum aperture of f1.8, which is very unique on a zoom lens, especially at this price point. And so why is that important? Well, especially on a crop sensor camera where maybe you're looking to get more shallow depth of field, maybe you're looking to get better low light performance, having f1.8 is massively helpful. And I'm actually shooting at f1.8 right now, and you can see how this looks. You got a nice blurry background here. And th that leads me to the next point about why this lens is also super awesome on the R7 is because the R7 has an RF mount, the Sigma lens has an EF mount, so you have to use an adapter anyways. And the adapter I'm using is the Mica or Mikey, I don't know how to pronounce it, drop-in variable ND filter. And I will talk a little bit about that ND filter in this video, but I wanna make a separate review about it because it's super cool. But because we have to adapt this lens anyways, it allows us to slip in an ND filter. And for video, that's huge. Not having to screw filters on the front, is awesome. <laughs> so there are, as I said, there are a few drawbacks to this lens. Let's talk about those. Now let's talk about the negatives about this lens. And there's kind of one big one, which I'm sure most of you know about is gonna be the, <laughs> the autofocus noise. As I said, this lens was made in 2013 and designed for DSLRs where ph photography was the priority. Now, a lot of us are shooting on hybrid cameras and using these lenses for video as well but the motors they used in these older lenses were definitely audible when they were focusing, and that's for pretty much all the lenses of that time period. So that's why I'm using a lav mic today. I generally use a shotgun mic on top of the camera, <laughs> and I'm using the original Rode Wireless Go. I know there's a lot of new options out there for wireless, but this one is really simple and works fine. I often use the Sennheiser AVX for most things, but for this, it's great. Anyways, uh, I know that inside, if you put a shotgun mic on top of the camera, it will pick up the autofocus noise of the lens. But if you're outside, I'm not sure. I'll test that when I get home and we'll see how that does because I'm sure some of you are curious about that. But the autofocus does work really well. So let's take a look real quick. Now, another nice thing about this lens for a lot of people, especially shooting video, is the manual focus part. And that's the fact that it's not focused by wire, that you're actually, when you focus the lens, you're actually changing the focus on the lens. And that's really nice for when you're doing manual focus for video, especially, and a lot of people like that. So on top of that, the other negative that people will probably not be happy about is that the lens is a little bit heavy and large for a crop sensor lens. And then you have to use an adapter as well on the R7. For me personally, that's not much of a drawback because what you get in terms of image quality and versatility of this lens is incredible. And often when you're shooting video, you have other equipment anyways. Like for photography, the camera's a little bit more simple. So it's a little bit bigger, really not a big deal for me. If you're gonna adapt other high quality lenses on this, on this camera, like uh, full frame EFL lenses, they're gonna be much larger and you're still gonna have to use the adapter. And if you're using full frame RF lenses, that are high quality, those are gonna be even larger and definitely more expensive. So I think it's not so bad on this camera. What are the other options for video lenses for this? Well, right now there's only two native lenses and those are gonna be the RFS 18 to 150 variable aperture lens, which is the kit lens for the R7. 
and the RFS 18 to 45, which is the kit lens for the R10. Again, another variable aperture lens, but they're not gonna be nearly the same in terms of the image quality sharpness, and of course, the wide maximum aperture of F1.8. There are other options out there in terms of, you know, as I said, adapting full frame lenses, but a lens that has this flexibility and the image quality, it's kind of hard to beat this lens. Of course, there are those two drawbacks. All right, let me head home because <laughs> I'm getting a little warm and also we'll go through some of the details and I'll show you about the ND filter a little bit. So as I walk back to my truck, I figure I'll give you guys a quick vlogging test because some of you might be curious about that with this camera. I don't really do any handheld vlogging, but I figured I'd <laughs> give it a shot to just give you an idea of what's going on with this. So I am hand holding the camera by the lens and I have the IBIS turned on in the camera. So of course this lens does not have stabilization in the lens and I do not have the electronic turned on because that would crop in even more. I think this lens is a little too tight for vlogging, uh, mainly because it's at 18 millimeters and you can't really see much of the background behind me. Sorry, this is actually rather difficult walking. Try not to trip on the trail and also talking to you at the same time, but if you give you a sense of stabilization because some people were asking about that with this camera, it's also, as I said, this lens is pretty heavy, so it's pretty hard to probably hold up in front of your face for a long time, and I don't think it's wide enough. I'm back home now, so let's test out the autofocus noise using a shotgun microphone on the camera. I have the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus mounted in the hot shoe, so it's literally right above the lens. I have the lens set at f1.8 to make it work as hard as possible. So let me move around a little bit, and I'll stop talking, and you can see how loud the autofocus noise is outside. Well, there you go. I didn't adjust the volume at all during that clip, so that's how loud it is. Now let's hear how loud the autofocus is inside. So again, I have the same microphone on the camera, but I just, I'm inside. So let me move back and forth while I'm talking to see if you can hear the autofocus noise while I'm talking versus when I'm not talking. Is that a deal breaker for you? Now I'm back here set up in the studio and I wanna show you the gear that I was using and sort of talk about it a little bit more. I always think I should probably bring another camera with me when I go out talking about gear, but I'd rather shoot with it and use it and so you can see how it works and then talk about it later. So here's the setup. We got the R7 with a Sigma 18 to 35 and the adapter. Now, as I was saying before, you know, you have an EF lens with an RF mount, you need some sort of adapter in there. And so most people are using the basic Canon EF to RF adapter, which is $100. Canon makes a few other adapters. One has a control ring, they have one with a uh, polarizer, they have one with a variable ND filter, which is similar to this Mikey, but a lot more expensive. There's a lot of options out there, but we can take advantage of this situation here because I often am shooting outside and I need to have a variable ND filter, which usually screws on the front. So this is really cool because inside of this adapter is the variable ND, and there's a little knob on here that when you turn it, it changes how much neutral density you have. So that's really neat. In addition to that, the Mikey adapter comes with a clear one that you can pop in. So if you don't want any ND, you can pop this in. You need to have something in there. You can't just leave it open. Another option is to just you know swap the adapter out for a blank one. The Canon one, just to let you know, is $400. This one is really cool because it's $160 and it comes with the clear one. The clear thing for the Canon one is I think another $100. So if you're curious about this lens or the adapter, I will leave affiliate links down below and I really do appreciate your support for checking those out and also subscribing to this channel because I know most of you are not subscribed. So all that stuff's linked down below for you to check out. I will make a full review on this, but I do wanna say that the Mikey adapter is rated at ND three to 500, which is equivalent to one and a half to nine stops. So I wanna see how at color accurate and stuff and vignetting and cross polar and stuff like that. I'll, I'll do a separate video about that. But overall, this is a great setup. Now, this lens is really special, as I was telling you before, for crop sensor cameras, but also for uh, like cinema cameras. So a lot of people are using this lens on Blackmagic pocket cameras. They're using this lens on RED cameras. They're using this on Canon cinema cameras. This lens is used on a lot of different crop sensor and Super 35 cameras out there because of the quality of the optics. And as I also mentioned, having that manual focus that is not focused by wire is really helpful when you're trying to do uh, manual focus throws. Now, the other thing about this lens is there's actually a cine version of this lens, which is a lot more expensive. So because the optics are so good, Sigma has cinema lens versions of a lot of their stills lenses. So keep that in mind. As I said earlier, I'm always really impressed with the image quality of this lens. 
This is not gonna full review of this lens. There are so many of those on YouTube for you to check out. Now I did make a comparison video of this versus the RF 15 to 35 F 2.8 L lens on C70. I'll leave that link down below if you wanna check out that comparison. Having the ability to shoot at f1.8 is awesome. I love the ability to get shallow depth of field when you want it, and of course the low light capabilities. In terms of autofocus for this lens, I think that's something that I don't wanna just skip over because this is old school technology and the newer lenses are gonna be more accurate. If you're using this lens for slow moving scenes, talking head, interview, I think this is a great option, especially when you're shooting at f1.8. Now, if you're looking to track really quick moving subjects or highly changing scenes, I think some of the RF lenses that I mentioned before, the RFS lenses, or maybe some of the RF lenses, or maybe some of the newer EF lenses adapted might work a little bit better. I think it is okay on this lens, it's not exceptional. So you definitely wanna keep that in mind about autofocus. I also wanna mention that focus breathing is really well controlled on this lens and that's really sought after when you're shooting video. Overall, I think this is a really great combination, especially for the price. The lens goes for, I think it retails for 800, but I generally see it new for 650 to 700, and you can definitely find them used. A lot of people have these. Uh, you might be able to save $100, $200 for a good copy of it. Of course, the adapter is great at $160, so this is a great combo. There are a lot of great options for lenses for this camera, but in terms of video and having the flexibility of a zoom lens, I'm a big fan of zoom lenses, having the low aperture, also the sharpness of this lens, I think pairs really well with the R7 because of that 7K oversample in 4K fine. So. Great combination here. There are a lot of other options for people to explore, but I think a lot of people were asking me sort of, would this lens work? Or people were asking me for sort of a good place to start. I think this is it. Of course, keep in mind about the autofocus noise as well, because that might be a deal breaker for some people, but I think it's worth the work around in most situations. I also just want to make a quick comment about using a speed booster on the R7, because I've been getting a lot of questions about that. Now, I did see an interview with a Canon person, and they said that they don't officially approve it, but they said it'll probably work. And I agree, I bet you the speed boosters will work like the ones from Canon and Viltrox. I own the Viltrox Speed Booster, but I don't currently have a full frame EF lens to test it out. It's something I might try out in the future, but if you've been using the Speed Booster, any of them on the R7 and you're having good luck or bad luck, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, please hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, there's gonna be a lot more cool stuff coming out about videography, content creation, and of course, camera gear. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>